Do you want to remove a bulky belly? But it doesn't work. Because you've tried going to the gym, you've tried dieting. In general, whatever you try, but the stomach still stays with you. Watch this video to the end. I will tell you a few things that a person who wants to get rid of a big belly problem once and for all must know. Hello, my friends. My name is Marina Zhigolskaya, and on this channel, we are learning to get rid of pathologies, conditions and diagnoses with the help of nutritionology. So, if you are watching this video, it means that the battle with your stomach has been lost more than once. And now I want to tell you and show you why you are constantly losing this battle. And to do this, we need to understand how the body works, how it works, and where this belly fat comes from. So, to begin with, I suggest, first of all, to accept that the body is a single whole, and to fight only with the stomach in a single body is a battle lost. And secondly, accept the fact that a flat stomach is always lying around in the kitchen. And if you go to the gym, and kill in the gym, but don't pay attention to what you eat, when you eat, and how you eat, the battle will be lost again. Let's start, perhaps, with the fact that visceral fat on the abdomen is an evolutionary trap. The thing is that nature has given us an evolutionary mechanism for survival, and to understand how this mechanism works, we need to look into the biochemistry of our digestion. So, first of all, let's figure out what visceral fat is. Visceral fat is fat that envelops your internal organs, and consequently, in the waste area, you begin to increase in size. The so-called lifeline. It is formed in our country for a reason, because it is exactly the kind of fat that the body is very easy to get and process. In other words, visceral fat is the metabolically most active organ, because if the body needs energy, it is much easier for it to take it just around the organs and steal. Then, for example, from the hips, why does the body use visceral fat as energy? Let's go back a little bit. But how did nature invent us? The thing is that the evolutionary mechanisms, they are given to us for a reason. When we didn't have access to supermarkets and refrigerators, at that time, we had periods of hunger and periods of feasting, so-called. So, pernu is natural, summer is access to vegetables, to fruits, and winter is just hunger. This is when, well, if you dug up some kind of root there, it's good. Basically, there was no access to carbohydrates. And over the summer, the body had to have time to stock up on reserves, in the form of this visceral fat, which it could use in winter. And this allowed it to live through the winter. How is this visceral fat formed? The thing is that every meal we have is accompanied by the release of the hormone insulin. Insulin, the main task of insulin, is to take glucose from the blood and drag it into the cell, roughly speaking. We ate, the insulin rose, and it will fall for four hours. But if we ate, he got up and just started to fall, we ate again. He's on top again, he's on top again he's on top again, and he's always at the top. Because all these are multiple snacks are constant, there are a lot of sugars. I have already said that the main task of insulin is to deliver glucose from the blood to the cell. Because glucose in the blood is a very dangerous condition. It sugars your proteins. It's called glycation and brings a lot of troubles for the body in the future. Therefore, insulin must utilize glucose. But when insulin often knocks on the cage, because you have eaten, it is high, it has not had time to go down, and it is constantly knocking on the cage. The cell stops responding to it. There is a so-called resistance. This is the first reason, that is, frequent fractional nutrition. The second reason is a lot of carbohydrates and sugars in the diet, which do not have time to utilize insulin. And the third reason is fructose. Lots of fructose. The thing is that fructose has a different metabolic pathway of utilization, unlike glucose. And it is not needed by any cell of our body. It immediately flies to the liver for disposal and turns into fats. So, 
All these three mechanisms once helped us survive, and now they have genetically started working against us. And now, when we have access to food without doing anything, well, that is, without moving, in fact, we have a very sedentary lifestyle. When we have a lot of carbohydrates and sugars in our diet all year round, when we have a lot of fructose, because it is now being shoved even they're into healthy food products, then, of course, we will gain this visceral fat, and this will no longer contribute to survival in times of famine, because we simply do not have them. This will contribute to visceral obesity. It will contribute to insulin resistance, cardiovascular failure, diabetes mellitus, and so on, up to oncology. That is, you ask, but what to do? What physical exercises are needed? Of course we do. I will give you this example for this, and I went for a massage once, and my master tells me during the massage that he says, imagine, I lost 17 kilograms in four or five months. I say, what did you do? He says he didn't do anything. He just sold the car. I walk to and from work now. 40 minutes to work. 40 minutes from work. Sometimes, he says, I'm late. I have to go very fast. And in fact, this alone contributed to the fact that he lost weight. Well, in general, the whole body. Therefore, of course, movement is necessary. But not such a movement as we imagine. Well, we understand. Because when a person has a big belly, and he starts, for example, pumping the press, and he does not pump it constantly. He shook it once a day, or maybe every day, for example, and thinks, I'm good, but my stomach just doesn't go anywhere. So, the movement should be constant. That is, every hour you have to get up and do something. Because it activates all your processes, it brings blood flow, and therefore vitamins, minerals, nutrients to cells, tissues and organs, and in principle, this is, of course, a request for energy, because especially after a carbohydrate meal, it is necessary to get up and move, because these carbohydrates are thus disposed before the movement that you have made. And if, for example, you ate, especially if there were carbohydrates, and then sat down in a chair, sat down at the computer, and lay down on the sofa, then, of course, these carbohydrates will not be disposed of and they will just be deposited in your tummy. Therefore, Physical exercises are certainly needed, but the stomach, remember I said, is lying in the kitchen. So, what should we do in the kitchen? And here, just a person grabs at straws for some kind of diet or is looking for proper nutrition. Once again, there is no proper nutrition. I will always drown for this. There is no such thing as proper nutrition. There is a concept of suitable nutrition, and it is suitable depending on the person to whom we recommend it. A person can have different metabolism, different age, different problems in the body, different intolerances, different sensitivities, and it will depend on what products we choose for him. But the most important thing, well, I hope I have conveyed to you that everything is individual here. But the most important thing that unites all absolutely people is, of course, the exclusion of carbohydrates from the diet. It is not necessary to exclude them completely. It is necessary to reduce them a little. And in order to eat enough, in order not to feel hungry, because hunger is also stress for the body. Let's talk about stress separately. It is necessary to add fats, healthy fats. And when you add fats and remove carbohydrates, your metabolism is rebuilt to burn that internal fat. Because it is from visceral fat, nature has invented it, that the body makes glucose at those moments when a person has winter, and he cannot have access to vegetables and fruits. Imagine, our body can even do this, therefore, it is not necessary to get involved in these provocative things, that sugar is needed for the brain. So I feed the child with chocolate, so that he thinks better. He will think worse, because excessive sugar glycates blood vessels, breaks down your carbohydrate metabolism, and does not lead to anything good, but it leads to the stomach in the future. Of course, stress also plays a huge role in all this. Stress should be paid attention to. Why? Because we often underestimate that this is a very important factor in our excess weight. He can only do one thing, start such metabolic processes that will never allow you to lose weight. Therefore, stress is very important. And one more parameter is, of course, sleep. Watch how you sleep. If, for example, your rhythms do not match those that are outside the window and those that are in your body, the body will not be able to lose weight. It will not be able to. Therefore, it is necessary to go to bed on time. 
It is necessary to get up on time and ensure that sleep is of high quality because it is in a dream that we also lose extra pounds. So, practical recommendations. The most important thing is to move, to move constantly, permanently, without being killed in the hall, but just to be in motion. Naturally, the movement should be such that you, for example, walked if, then you walked at a fast pace. If you are, for example, in the office or at home working at a computer, then every hour you get up and do something. Static exercises work very well here because they just trigger that energy request that you need in order to burn off excess carbohydrates. Any static. It can be a plank. It can be a high chair against the wall. Well, that is, there are a lot of exercises now. And you can do it, in fact, every hour, absolutely anywhere. To do this, it is enough to allocate five minutes. The next point is, of course, nutrition. And here my recommendations are that we slowly remove carbohydrates. We remove the simple ones immediately and slowly reduce the amount of cereals, side dishes, and add healthy fats instead. These are olives, avocados, duck goose fat, lard, butter. Here I would not recommend leaning on vegetable or sunflower oils because they still have a pro-inflammatory factor and supplement. By itself, adipose tissue is also a pro-inflammatory factor and it is not worth adding it. The next point is snacking. That is, do not bully your insulin, do not keep it up all the time, because it is insulin that will never let you lose weight. With high insulin, this is impossible, even if your insulin is normal. But at the same time, your receptors are no longer sensitive to insulin, because there was a lot of insulin in their life, and you will not lose weight. It is almost impossible to lose weight with insulin resistance. Therefore, four-hour intervals between meals. Anything that's not water is food. No snacking, clean intervals. There is another plus in this, because such intervals improve the sensitivity of the coleptin and will wake up the grill. It is a hormone of hunger and satiety. When you sit down to eat without feeling hungry, your body is not ready to process food, and all this will, of course, go into fat. First of all, in the visceral, it's the easiest place for the body to put off and the easiest place to take from there. In fact, these are all recommendations. Agree, it's not difficult. In order to say goodbye to a bulky belly and excess fat on the waist forever, it's absolutely not difficult. It absolutely doesn't take much time. The only point here is regularity and consistency, because when you do one small action that doesn't lead you anywhere today and multiply it by time, you get a colossal result, no matter what it concerns. And, my friends, I often say that a healthy body will never retain excess fat. Therefore, the most important thing for us is to go to health and fat will melt on the way. And in order to understand all this in detail, consistently, I am holding a three-day free intensive, which will take place on the 6th, 7th, 8th of June. And in this intensive, we will analyze three main topics, without which it is impossible to move on. The gastrointestinal tract is, of course, how your body functions at the level of assimilation of nutrients and excretion and excess fat, including hormones. We will analyze here from the hormonal system side what you need to pay attention to, how to understand that she is no longer in order and tests. And, of course, we will talk with you here about what tests to pass, what to pay attention to, what to consider as the optimum, what kind of reference, and what to focus on, that is, intensive gastrointestinal tract, hormones and tests will be held on the 6th, 7th, 8th of June. Register using the link in the description. It's free, and we will see you on the 6th of June, and we will analyze in great detail all the nuances that you need to take into account in order not only to get rid of excess fat, but in principle to get well and excellent health. Friends, tell me how you keep track of your form. Please share in the comments, perhaps, your successes or your experience. I hope that I have conveyed to you today that getting rid of the stomach is not just some exercises, for example, and not in two days, not in a week. These are consistent recommendations. 
that should be followed just every day. They are not complicated. They are easily integrated into your daily schedule. But nevertheless, if you do them every single day, you will notice very big improvements after a while, a maximum of two or three weeks there, without torturing yourself in the gym, without sitting on the most severe diets, with your usual habits which we talked about. If you introduce them as habits, you will move towards a slim Italy, and in principle, to good health. Be sure to like it, it's very important to me, and subscribe to the channel, because there will be a lot of useful things about health here. And I was with you, Marina Zhigolskaya, and the School of Health and Resource. See you in the new videos.